come out with these 80s? Yeah, it would have been like right around 1980 when we came out with these things. You can kind of just peek in there and you'll see we added this shield in here because there's such high voltage and people are you know poking around in here. Yeah, it's because like, a screwdriver here. Ah! <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was about 1980-81. We were we were probably I think we started the design in early 1980 and probably actually release it, the 1981 January NAMM show. It was this amp, and then the only, because I've never, have a, I have a couple of the early Mark 1s and 2s mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that, and it was, it was always, a, it, it, it sounded like, it looked like small box, mm -hmm. you know, but loud, mm -hmm. you know, but the thing I loved about this one, these in particular, and they, they, they always seemed like they were 4 by 12 cabinet, they mm -hmm. had the bottom end, and, and it was there was a little less of the box sound you know? yeah we we listen to cabinet woods a lot and you know normally on an open back cabinet people don't really pay that much attention to woods like ah oh, it's an open back cabinet who cares you know but uh we spent a lot of time listening to different woods uh, uh to to kind of find something that had more of an open sound yeah uh, you know we listened to uh, you know obviously particle board is an inexpensive alternative and we listened to that and it was like kind of thick sounding and you know like the wood is you know yeah. it's just thick and dense sounding and uh, we we listened to uh, some different types of plywood marine yeah. grade plywood and uh, we uh, we use this Baltic birch plywood which is a really nice yeah. uh, real it's really well made plywood I mean you use it for typically for making uh, expensive furniture the sides of the drawers are made out of Baltic birch right. and stuff was nearly indestructible and it sounded good the birch had a nice sound yeah. at one point we used a, a solid core plywood it had just a veneer on both sides a birch veneer and then it had a core of mahogany and we really yeah. liked the sound of that That's too cool. yeah we uh, we liked pine a lot like the old fenders were all made out of pine which sounds awesome but it was just nearly impossible at the time to get pine boards wide enough to make the the cabinet yeah you know, they were just exorbitantly expensive but it, that actually was our favorite sound but due to scarcity of materials and everything we just never never went with it but we did have some special boards laminated and we did a little bit of listening it's like yeah this stuff sounds great yeah well yeah, i think it was really a revolutionary amp um, so how many modules did you own what I'm i have i have two of these amps um one i bought uh with uh, my friend rick on one of our um our uh, like music store days, mm -hmm. and um, and I have one head. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, right. I forgot about this. Like a bread box. Uh, yeah, but this big handles on both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are cool. And it almost looked like with the, it, I think it almost looked like you could mount it into a rack. A yeah, that's how it was designed to be able to take it out. Because that was the '80s when everybody right. was like racking. a shock mount, 19 inch rack. Yeah. And I think uh, I have like some of these. I think I have a low cut. Or, you know, I think it, most of mine's pretty stock. Mm -hmm. You know, classic, normal, mm -hmm. and um, I liked them because of the headroom. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I liked them, and the, the the other thing was, it was a great kind of like, if you get used to the sound, you could dial it back here, mm -hmm. and it sounded the same. It was like one of the best, like you know, the power tenure alone you guys should make because it's like it was like yeah. one of the one of the very coolest, most natural sounding ones. It's like you really struggle with getting the headroom right in the way the guitar and the amp really yeah unfortunately up. we couldn't take this power attenu attenuator out it's such a part of the circuit you know it's like part of the right. output stage you can't it, unfortunately you couldn't take it out because it was you know definitely i mean like and now you see all the amps that yeah. you know do it there's a 50 and you know some of them are switchable but no not with the potentiometer you know? yeah this one's switchable you know trio pento so you could do 50 with 100 and then you can dial it you know, fine tune it from yeah. there. I mean, you could take it all the way down to a few watts, you know, right. five watts, which was. So, what do you do? You just start with the plate voltage? No, actually, we're working in the driver stage. We had a, a special way of treating the driver stage that attenuated the power. We basically limited how hard the driver stage could drive the output tubes, and right. uh, and it was uh, it was a real effective way to uh, um, you know uh, limit the power in a in a real musical fashion. We had it, we actually. I was telling you earlier we had that circuit patented it was because we had we were struggling with power supply attenuation and we just never felt like that sounded right you know it's like the whole thing as you it did the sound didn't stay the same from high power to low power it, yeah. it kind of came apart at some point so 
and plus it was like put out a tremendous amount of heat and it was really a wasteful way to do it and right. we came up with the idea of, well let's try something in with the driver stage and we came up with this unique uh, driver right. configuration we actually have there's three tubes in our driver stage so we, this amp is a bit of a tube hog but right uh, but you know it has may not be sound. the greenest amp ever no. built but it's it's like I think I think it's a real classic design I think it's you know and I, and I know people in like collectible things they're not really hip to them not yet you no. know but I remember seeing these pop up at vintage guitar shows mm -hmm. and I always would try to you know convince my dad to buy me one and then I bought one in Maryland and I realized it was like with the it was like kind of like what you have here it was like a row case mm -hmm. and I realized it was like it was like over a hundred pounds and I, <laughs> and I and I couldn't I couldn't put it on the plane to get it home yeah probably know what I want the road case with the road case so I ended up having to like do the walk of shame back to the music store. It was a really clean one. I mm -hmm. said I, I, I gotta you know fly home in a couple of days and I can I can I take this back and luckily the guy was nice enough and you know I I, I uh, traded him some tickets and a few CDs and stuff like that. He gave me my money back. But, but I'm I'm glad you know it's like I think there should be a, like a real appreciation, you know, uh, thread started online of, of of how revolutionary this 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 amp was and that. You know, sadly, people. You know, when they when they mention the the great single twelve comments, it's always Mark one B, Mark two B. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you know, even you know, lesser extent, the the great Jim Kelly amps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but this to me is like right up there with all of those, and in, in, in a lot of ways better because of the versatility and the certainly the, the, the power. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about the weight, and uh, we made some of these with. Uh, we worked with JBL to develop a guitar speaker that was pretty cool sounding, and then we also um, uh, we used to put EVs in these things. So we had EV twelve L. Love it. Those Love things it. just weighed a ton. They were they were so heavy, but they sounded awesome. My uh, my four by twelve cabinets are, are split stereo in the middle mm -hmm. with steel plates, mm -hmm. keeping them from rattling, mm -hmm. and each of them has four twelve L e EVs in it. They yeah, sound fantastic. Yeah, but. Yeah. When you go like this, it's like you need two guys. You feel like it's nailed to the floor. You yeah, know? I couldn't nail this thing down. But there is a sound to that kind of power and headroom, you know, that that you don't get with low wattage speakers and and low wattage amps. I mean, it's like it's it's the sound of the amp not having to work too hard to produce, you mm -hmm. know, you know. Plus, it has a ton of headroom. I mean, if you, you want to play a real great clean sound that you can right. really play it loud right. with those speakers and, and it just holds together really nicely and the distortion I think the yeah. L had a great sound of distortion too well, we, when you break them up we did a thing it's like I let, uh, let my bass player plug up through my rig one time he wanted to see how it would sound so he's like I hope I don't blow your speakers I go the EVs are not going to yeah, blow up yeah they're pretty, pretty, tough. They're pretty rugged I don't think we ever saw a single EV blown we used to um, at JBLs every once in a while we'd have a problem with one of those blow I think it was a developmental speaker for them at that right. time they hadn't really totally worked it out but the EVs never never had one of those things ever come back we had can't guys, kill them yeah no they're just they're brutal you know? yeah I love them